He's terrible. He's terrible? He should be off Spotify, uh, behind Neil Young all the way. It's offensive, and it's not our choice. It's not his choice, and shouldn't be using it. He's been doing a lot of crazy <laughs> lately. He just thinks he can do whatever he wants, you know? Do you guys care? Absolutely not. Hell no. Nah. I don't care. What about you? Not at all. He's not saying I'm bad to me, so I don't care. <laughs> I don't give a f Do I care about Joe Rogan generally or this issue specifically? No, but people are going to want to be upset about whatever they're going to be upset about. Does it bother you or does it not? As soon as I give me a show, it's the first thing I'm going to say, I made it. If anything that George Floyd taught us was to yeah. open our eyes and actually see what's in front of us and right. actually address it, not just keep ignoring it. And by keeping him on, we're ignoring it. Okay, well, let's bring in our panel to talk more about this. James Klug, who you saw there in the video, Mustafa <clears throat> Tamiz and Amy Tarkanian here as well. James, great work. I especially loved how you got down low there with Roller Girl to get that perspective. That was excellent work. Uh, but tell us, were you, were you surprised by the response? I mean, you know, folks were watching that they obviously can see. You found like the most uptight white liberal family in California, I guess. But a lot of the other folks didn't seem to care so much. Yeah, we, we figured that just everyday Americans don't live in the world of you know, the angry mob on Twitter. Uh, when people look at this word being used, generally speaking, I mean, they know that Joe Rogan has mentioned that he hasn't used it in years. Uh, they know that he wasn't directing it to anybody. And I made sure to be very clear about that with people. I wanted to be as clear as possible with people. Uh, on the full video on my YouTube channel, you know, we, we have, we have, uh, we pretty much expected it. We expected that the black community didn't care that much. And we, ex we did expect that the white community would. And I think this is a really, uh, big thing because to be honest with you, it seems as though most white people that we spoke with uh, were very upset about it, it even after I, I gave all the uh, details and everything like that. And it seems as though a lot of that, a lot of the reason for that is because the media and the, and the left really use race to promote an agenda in this country. And mm -hmm. I think a lot of black Americans are waking up to that. Yeah, they want results. They don't care so much about the words. They actually want the policies that back up uh, what's being said. You know, the other issue, Amy, we often talk about with cancel culture is it's like this snowball effect. It metastasizes. There's no real end to it. It starts with tearing down statues of Confederate generals. You're like, okay, that makes sense. But then, you know, 10-year-old videos of Joe Rogan are getting him canceled from something that we actually have to subscribe to in the first place to get access to, and then other issues start coming up. I mean, we've seen all the old clips of Howard Stern. Those are ugly. Someone also pointed out that R. Kelly, who's been convicted of trafficking kids for sex across state lines, his music is still up on Spotify. Bill Cosby's material is still up on Spotify. So, you know, where does the cancel culture stop, and is Joe Rogan really the target here? Uh, you know, it's, it just, it's like a whack-a-mole situation. Well, that's that's what they need is just a target. And he just happens to be front and center because he has one of the most popular podcasts at this moment. And, you know, you can go ahead and go into probably a majority of the people who are high profile into their past and maybe find something or twist something um, to fit your narrative. I mean, there's even video of going, you talk about Joe Rogan, and what about the other Joe? You've got President Joe Biden who is on video and it's going around uh, showing him also using the N word and using some other racist comments. So why hasn't he been canceled or chastised? Uh, you know, it, it, we're at a day and age where you got to be real careful on how you're approaching this. And just like James said, Joe was not using this derogatory comment to be hateful and using it at somebody. There is a difference. It was in a discussion. Um, would I use that terminology? No, I, because I also know better than that. Um, but it is interesting to see that most black Americans are not uh, concerned about this. It's the, it's the white people who are afraid of saying the wrong thing. Yeah, at least anyway, that's, that's what James found out on the streets of California. I want to get Mustafa's take on all this. I mean, this started with, with singer India Ari, you know, saying that she was going to pull her music from Spotify. The, the video went viral. And Mustafa, I mean, you know, we talked about some serious things on this program. This is obviously not the most serious one, but are you surprised by how this story has kind of just blanketed uh, the media over the last week or so? Manufacture controversy on all sides, right? We're talking about it here. At, at, at the end of the day, most Americans don't know who Joe Rogan is. Uh, I would venture to guess most African Americans have never heard of the man. 
but it's the right of other artists to say, I don't want my music or my content on a platform because they're promoting someone else. Just like it's his right to go out and say what he wants and face the consequences. Well, of Mustafa, that. again, I, you know, I hate to, to be difficult here, but that's not what happened. Neil Young said he gave an ultimatum, him or me, and that is, that's effectively calling for the cancellation of some person. I agree with you. If musicians but, don't want to be on the platform, then they should get off, and that's fine. Indy Re made her statement, but Neil Young has made an ultimatum. Others have made an ultimatum. It's an either-or situation, and only liberals seem to advocate for that. It's his content. It is his music. He can choose where it's going to be and where it's going to be placed. If he says, if you want my music, you can't have that there, then Spotify's got a choice. They can either take him or they can take Joe Rogan. He has the right in America to say what he wants to say. Uh, if, you, if you automatically say, I don't want anybody else to complain because he happens to be a conservative. We're not saying that you said. can't, we're not, no one's saying not, you can't complain. We, we want to have the discourse. You want to have disagreement. You want to have forums discourse. like this where I can, I can debate and we can debate with and you, Mustafa, and get, the, the, the get that out there. But that's not what, that's not what Neil Young and, and a lot of these folks are saying. And it's John, silence and Joe John, Rogan I would like to else. know, why is it okay well, my, for Neil Young back in the day to blame AIDS on, on the LGBTQ community and to use, and I apologize for saying this, but well, it's to okay, use the Amy. word faggot, it's okay. which is just it, as we bad. Don't, yeah, we can self-censor, we don't need to use those terms, but it's okay because we didn't have the internet where stuff gets recirculated over right. and over and over again. And that's kind of my point, it's just Mustafa. It's disgusting. You know, when you start talking about race, and you, you, there's always going to be another layer of the onion you can peel back, and that—that was my point about cancel culture. That it's a never-ending, you know, road to nowhere. But it's being played as much on conservative side as on progressive side, right? We can't. I, say I don't know if that's fair. I, I mean, I don't totally disagree with you, but this segment, we are—we are starting to talk about the controversy. We just looked at a, a segment where we're, we're saying, based on that segment, how many African Americans don't care. That's not a scientific survey by any means. Claim, it's not I, a sci It's a man on the street, and James did a great job. He got a lot of voices there, and no one's saying that Mustafa, is, you know, uh, that's not the Gallup poll representative of African American voices. I'll Mustafa, let James with all due, defend himself. With, with all due, with all due respect, I mean, you're 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 literally uh, painting, you're you're covering for censorship here. These individuals, Neil Neil Young, used to be anti-establishment. He's no longer anti-establishment. He is, he is encouraging censorship. In fact, the rest of the Democratic platform is jumping on board with encouraging and pushing for censorship. The White House is the doing way it that too. you're laying this out. Yeah, the White House He's is saying, laying it out too. The way that He's you're saying. laying this out, you're, you're, you're quite literally sprinkling, uh, you know, making it sound like it's a free speech issue. Uh, and it is. It's Democrats and the left and the elite trying to uh, censor exactly it, their opposition. It's a free speech issue. You have the right to say, I don't want my music on this platform. And if your music gets pulled from that platform, that's not, you're fine with that. And that's what he's saying. So I can't, I can't imagine that all of us are okay with saying, don't criticize other people. We're not don't. saying that. We're not saying well, that. It's a conversation of censorship versus free speech. I'm on the side of free speech. What side are you on? And the real issue, this crossed he the line for a lot of people, Mustafa. Without threatening others. Don't listen, to just, don't listen to his music then. Like he's, he's basically well, saying- a lot, of people have, a lot of people are doing that. But look, this really crossed the line for some people, Mustafa, when, when Jen Psaki from the podium in the briefing room said that she supported what Spotify was doing, labeling Joe Rogan, thus making it censorship and a First Amendment issue. We got to leave it there. I love it when we have plenty to talk about and not enough time. That's the way it's supposed to work. James, Mustafa, Amy, Great to see everyone. James, great work. Great to have you back on Newsmax as well. I'm John Bachman now. All right.